morning, everybody, and welcome. What a beautiful week we've had, haven't we? And it's going to continue for another week to come. We did have rain last night, which was... It was actually nice, wasn't it? Yeah, Peter washed the car, so... He's always washing the car. But it was lovely to have. And it was very nice with the band this morning that has brought us into an atmosphere... (laughs) <laughs> Let's try that again. Um, bringing us into this atmosphere of worship to God, that we are coming this morning to worship God. This is his time this morning. We're going to commence with singing song 37 in our book, song book. And it gives us some of the things that God is, that he is immortal, that he is unresting. He is the giver of life. So I'm going to invite you to stand. We'll sing the four verses straight through. And this is an attitude of praise to God this morning, the person we have come to worship. Please rise. Three, four to 12 says, For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of their mouth, his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts it deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord, let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be, he commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nation, he thoughts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. Amen. We're now going to song, turn to Song 32. And it, it's become a very well known song and a beautiful song. How deep the Father's love to us, how vast beyond all measure. He has such love for us that it cannot be measured, but He loves us immensely. We're going to sing the first and the, the second verse through.
this morning, as well as our general prayers to God of praise, um, we're also going to pray this morning for our new chief, chief of staff to the Salvation Army, Commissioners Ed Wood and Shelley Hill. He is now the <coughs> chief of staff and she is going to be the um, World Secretary for Women's Ministries. And it is a great big, it's a huge responsibility. So we need to think about them as they're preparing to take over on this role as from the 3rd of August as well. So let's pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you um, that we're able to come here this morning and we can gather together in fellowship, we can gather and, and worship you, Lord, and that you know each one of us, you know what our needs are this morning. And Lord, we just pray that you will answer those needs as well. And I just pray that we will have hearts that are going to listen to your voice as well, to hear what you want to say to each one of us. And Lord, this morning as, as we look at Abraham's calling, as you called him to what he was meant to be and what he was meant to do, Lord, we all have a calling. Um, you know, it may not be to be the, the father of a great nation. It, it may not be for some spectacular thing, but Lord, you have still called us all to do your will, will in your name. And this morning, Lord, we bring Commissioners Hill to you this morning as they have now been appointed as um, the Chiefs of Staff and for Women's Ministry Worldwide, Lord. And I just pray that you will give them everything that they need to do their job. It's a huge responsibility, Lord, but you have called them to these positions because you know that they are capable of fulfilling those roles, Lord. You will equip them to do what is needed. So, Lord, I just pray that you will be with them. And I pray that they will always know that you are definitely with them, regardless of whatever situation that they may face, Lord, and that you are leading and guiding them. So, Lord, as we continue our meeting this morning, as we continue to worship you, Lord, um, I just pray that you'll continue to bless each one of us that is here this morning. And for those, Lord, who are away or who are not well, I, I just pray also that they are very aware of you today as well. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we'll sing the third verse through, please. the announcements. Thank you, David. He's very busy this morning, but he's also not well. Oh. Like many here, I'm sure, the hay fever season has struck and it makes you feel really miserable. Never mind. Summer is summer. We should be grateful for some sunshine, even if it does bring the pollen out. Hallelujah. Welcome to each and every one of you this morning. Uh, I'd like to give an especial welcome to uh, Lieutenant Colonels Ian and Lynette Hudson, who are um, visiting um, from New Zealand. Uh, they're staying with Ian and Janet, and uh, Ian's in the band and Lynette's sitting beside Janet down there. Let's give them a welcome. Think of uh, Philip and Bethany today as they are leading worship at the City Centre Corps and we pray that they will, may be a blessing uh, and be blessed in their ministry too. As far as the diary is concerned, unfortunately, um, and with sincere apologies for inconvenience and disappointment, this evening's social meal has had to be postponed. It was taken out of our hands yesterday when the restaurant phoned up and said that they could no longer meet the numbers that we were wanting to bring. And uh, the question was put to them, why did you not tell us this at the time? So there we go. And uh, we will arrange, rearrange something for August. 
Wednesday and Thursday this week we have cafe. Wednesday at 7pm we have Bible study here in the hall. On Thursday at 7pm we have defibrillator training. And the list for that, for participating and signing up, is on the wall in the YP Hall. And uh, if it's something that interests you and you haven't put your uh, name on the list, then I could encourage you to do so today. Uh, Friday, Kids Zone and Band. Please keep in mind also the Kids Zone event on Friday the 23rd that was explained last week. And all are welcome to come for food and fun on Friday the 23rd. Uh, also remind you of the valedictory and retirement meeting at Govan on Sunday the 25th of June at 4.30pm. I'd ask you to please refer to the newsletter for more information and also the prayer pointers. And that's all from me. Thank you for listening. Thank you. We're going to sing a, another song, song 56. Sorry, the bandmaster was making me laugh there, I'm sorry. He thought he'd like to have a go with a taser rather than the defibrillator. So, <laughs> if you're in the band, be careful. We're going to sing song 56. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy help and salvation. All ye who hear, brothers and sisters draw near, praise him in glad adoration. We're going to sing the first verse, and you've got a whole verse to decide if you'd like to give a testimony this morning. Is that a yes? Two minutes maximum. <laughs> but if you, if you would like to give a testimony of what God has done for you or something you want to praise God for this morning, then stand right up and say. Because testimonies are encouraging to people. We can be encouraged by your testimonies. Or we, we can have things that we can pray for people about that we may not have known about before. So let's sing the first verse, please. seat? Anyone with a testimony this morning? Caroline. I'm sure it would be loud enough anyway. I just wanted to say a big thank you to the Lord and to everyone here and to the family for all the support that I personally and Ronald have received over the period when I haven't been well. I had so many visitors actually up at the hospital. I had one daughter move in, another daughter visit twice from Northern Ireland. So much kindness and goodness. It's, it was just wonderful. I'm, I'm practically, well, I may probably never 100%, you know me, but I'm, I'm practically there now. So thank you, Lord, and thank you, Clyde Bank Corps and all my friends and family. And continue to pray for, for Caroline because she's still, you know, getting her strength back after, you know, quite a, um, a long bout of illness there. 
Anyone else? <laughs> oh, Peter, it's good for you to have some exercise. <laughs> My steps up, eh? yeah, I just want to say that I want to thank everybody in the core for their prayers during my illness. Uh, it's a big uplift when you know that people are thinking of you. And uh, thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you, Robin. Let's sing the second verse and if you want to give your testimony after that, then jump to your feet. because we've been asking, Lord, why did you bring us so many miles away from India to the UK back again when we did not have this in plan at all? Uh, but I think slowly we are getting to know the reason why. My mom and I just came for shopping in Clyde Bank and on our way back, we stopped into the shop just next door to our Salvation Army. And we don't know why we went in there because it's a pretty expensive store. And we started talking to those ladies and eventually when we started speaking to them, they all decided to actually start going back to church. And I was looking and God said, you know why I brought you now to the UK. And I'm so happy that the Lord is using us mightily at work, wherever we go to the shopping malls, telling the Lord to make people open their hearts to go back to church, get your churches opened again. And while we are doing his work, he's doing a marvelous work in our lives. As you know, Bharat has got a job in Barclays. And um, so we want to thank you all for your prayers. Thanks, Peter and entire core. Apart from that, uh, I got through in the British Academy of Management, which was impossible. That's what they told me. It's impossible to get through, but they accepted my papers. And now I could also start teaching as a lecturer officially in the a university which was restricted for a long time but that came through so while we are doing the lord's work he's actually doing his work in us and thank you so much for your prayers and praise the lord for his mercies thank you thank you paulina and we have been so blessed to have you here as a family as well i mean i know it was difficult when you first came here but you know god he keeps his promises to you and he's been good to you and he will continue to be so is there anybody else before we sing the last verse? Is that a no? Okay, let's all join in singing the final verse, verse 5. tithes and offerings this morning.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, this morning we have um, been blessed and we've heard people speak about the blessings that they have received, Lord, from you and from this place. And Lord, um, we thank you for that. And Lord, this morning as we give of our, our tithes and offerings, Lord, we pray that we will give a little bit back to you, Lord. You give us so much, but Lord, I pray that you will accept what we have given to you this morning, Lord, and may we use those gifts wisely for you. Amen. We will now have the band message.
Thank you to the band. Did you pick up all the different songs in that one? I was just trying to remember of them then. There were so many of them all the way through. But our, our um, Bible reading this morning is taken from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through to 9. And it is the call of Abram. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your country, your people and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. Abram travelled through the land as far as the side of the great tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he went on towards the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and A on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued towards Negev. May God grant us understanding of this reading. Good morning, everyone. I fear that I'm losing my voice. No hallelujahs from over there, please. This morning we are going to have a look at Abram, or Abraham, as he was later known in the Bible, and God's calling upon his life. The first 11 chapters of Genesis takes us on a journey that looks at God's beginning relationship with his most precious creation, humankind. These opening chapters reveal to us the following narratives, the creation stories, Chapters 1 and 2. The fall of humankind in the Garden of Eden, chapter 3. The Great Flood, chapters 6, 7 and 8. And the Tower of Babel in chapter 11. These first 11 chapters are a narrative, albeit a very checkered narrative, between God and his creation. At the end of chapter 11, we're introduced to a person named Abram. God calls Abram. Who is Abram? Abram, or Abraham, is first introduced in the Old Testament as the first and arguably probably the greatest of all patriarchs. <clears throat> the patriarchs were described in the Bible as the fathers of the human race, according to Jewish history. God's call, sorry, Abraham's calling by God forms the beginnings of of the nation of Israel and God's chosen people. Abraham was born in the Chaldean city of Ur, which is up north of Israel, way, way north, between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. For those who've done their geography and their ancient history, you've got your picture in your mind now. He was called by God to leave his homeland and settle in Canaan. Now, although his wife Sarah or Sarai, seemed to be barren, God promised that his descendants would become a great nation. Verses 1 to 3. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land that land I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. That's quite a promise. Quite a promise. We've not heard much about the man Abram or Abraham before other than if you go to chapter 11 and you love reading a list of names, 
There's a little history of his lineage from the time of the flood down to his family. Here, though, God gives him a clear instruction to go. And it would appear that Abram obeyed. Now, Abram was 75 years old. Retirement age in Scotland is 66, is that right? Mm. Nine years to go, ladies and gentlemen. Nine years to go, God can still call you to do something. Stunned silence from the congregation. That's okay. <clears throat> Yet God has trusted, has trusted in the promises, sorry, Abram has trusted in the promises made by God. And for this reason, he is revered <clears throat> as being righteous in God's sight. The fulfilment of the promise, initially the nation of Israel and subsequently the Christian church, is one of the most important themes that runs throughout the entire Old and the New Testaments. Abram's faith and trust is seen as a model of Christian faith throughout the New Testament where Paul states that Abraham's faith establishes his relationship with God. Additionally, Abraham's trust in God as seen as the foundation of the doctrine of justification by faith rather than by works of the Jewish law. Very profound things that Paul shared in his teaching. Abram responds to God by saying yes. He packed up his family, his belongings and travelled for miles and miles and miles to the place that God had planned for him. In the midst of a sinful world where there were lots of people not living, the way, living in a way that was honouring God, God chose a faithful person to start afresh. God will reveal his plan to the whole world through Abram and the promises he made to make his descendants a great nation. A nation was born. God made a promise to Abram that he would be the father of a great nation. God wanted the Israelites to be a shining light to the surrounding nations. The nations around Israel would see that the one true God was leading this people that God had chosen. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that they too could serve the one true God and receive God's blessing. God set them apart, He gave them a law to live by, and then they were living as an example of a people serving the one true God. Now we know from studying the Old Testament in Bible studies and through the messages that we receive that God's chosen people failed to live up to God's expectations on many, many occasions. We know, though, that God loved his people, his creation, even though they regularly failed God. He continued to bring them back from their failures. As Abram and his family travelled from their home to where God wanted them to live, he reminded them again of his promises. Verse 7, God appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring I I will give this land. So he built an altar where the Lord, sorry, he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From the creation story, Right through the Old and the New Testaments, God is blessing his people by giving them what they needed to live by and serve God as living testimonies to the people around them. Throughout the Old and the New Testaments, there are plenty of stories of the trials and failures of God's people. Throughout it all, God, however, remained faithful to his people. Now, Abram's story is also our story. Look at the beginning of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, entitled, The Genealogy of Jesus the Messiah. This is the genealogy of of Jesus the Messiah, son of David, son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob and their father, the father of Judah and his brothers. Verse 1 2 are an extreme summary of the genealogy of Jesus right back to Abraham. 
If we want to read the full list again, verse the first 17 verses of Matthew, if you want to put yourself to sleep, go right ahead and read. It's a long list. Name by name, many that are difficult to pronounce. So what does this mean for us? Our relationship with God is founded on the calling of Abraham. In our testimonies, we talk about how God speaks to us. Or God is calling us into a relationship with him. In the Salvation Army, we speak about men and women being called to full-time service. Yet you cannot be called to full-time service until you have been called to be a soldier first in the Salvation Army. You are called to a relationship with God that sets you apart from the world around you. Soldiership is in itself a calling. You will stand there in your uniform and look different to the world around you. In your heart, you will act differently to the world around you and be a living testimony to who God calls you to be. As Christians, we are now God's chosen people. We are called to live not so much as a separate nation or a people. We are called to live in community. Like the nation of Israel, surrounded by others who may know very little about God. We, like the nation of Israel, are still to be a shining light to the people around us. We are no longer a separate nation, but literally living out our lives of faith in and around our local communities. Professing our faith through conversation and our actions. Our neighbours, our families will see God through us and hopefully they will be called to follow him as well. Where is God calling you to serve? Now I don't expect you, like Gail and I, to travel backwards and forwards across the world in different countries. Don't rule that out though. Don't rule that out. We never expected that when we went to college. God has called us to live a long way from our family. But our family know that and our family accept that. Yet in these places, this is where God has and is still calling us to serve. For you, God might be calling you to serve in another community, a suburb or a town further over from where you live, or with a specific group of people. God might be challenging you to serve in your own community. Your ministry might be to your neighbours, to your family, or to the people that you work with. Wherever God is calling you to serve, whatever location, whatever program or mission that you find yourself involved in, even here in Clydebank, know that the God who calls you is faithful. God calls those he believes are capable, even when we may not think that we are. God will equip you, sustain you, But most importantly, always remain faithful to those he calls to serve him, wherever that may be. From Abraham to now, the common denominator is that God is still calling people to serve him. My last question to you is what is God calling you to do? A song will play on the video screen. You may choose to sing along. You may wish to bow your heads and listen to the words. The place of prayer is always open. If God is challenging you to do something, then come and talk to him about it. Talk to others about it. Find out what God is wanting you to do. Don't be afraid to ask the question to God, why do you want me to do this?
Let's reflect. As I said, the place of prayer is always open. Let's share in the song together.
We talk about the effect that COVID has had on our community and on our church. If you read in the Clyde Bank Post, you'll see that there are many churches around us that are closing. God still has work for the church to do. And if we are one of the churches that needs to continue that work, then we need to step up and do it. This is the mission that God has called us to do. And if we are to become an encouragement to other congregations, then that is what we do as well. Let's pray together. Lord God, we praise you and thank you that right back from the very beginning when you called Abram to move across uh, many lands to the place where you would have him settle, that right up to today you are still calling people to serve with you and for you in many places around the world. We thank you that the mission of the church is not yet finished and that there are still things that we can do. We thank you that even here in this place, in Clydebank, that, Lord, that we can share, we can proclaim the gospel, we can have conversations with people in our church and around our community and share our faith in many different ways. And, Lord, this is the work that you have called us to do. Keep us faithful to the task because you are faithful to us in everything that we do. We pray that you will continue to equip us. We pray that you will continue to encourage us. We pray that we as a congregation will continue to pray and support each other through encouragement, through prayer, through support in many, many different ways as we heard in testimonies this morning. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise because we serve the living God, the one true God, and may we continue to do that in everything that we do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's sing our last song together. Song number 38. Jehovah is our strength and he shall be our song. We shall overcome at length, although our foes be strong. In vain does Satan then oppose, for God is stronger than his foes. I invite you to stand. We will sing verses 1, 2, 3 and 4. Thank you. Let's share in a benediction together. Please remember morning tea is served after the meeting. Come share in fellowship. That is part of our worship as well, sharing in fellowship and encouraging one another and catching up. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith so that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what to that which is before us, 
we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. The grace of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us for forevermore. Amen and amen. Have a great week.